Hi, it's me, CJ, and you're watching CJ's. Welcome, welcome back to the, the tube, everyone. We're gonna do a sit down video today, a little June wrap up. And I think like a baby speed round of the mid-year freak out tag, because I feel like I've been doing a lot of reflective mid-year check-in-y point videos lately when I do sit down videos. So I'm gonna spare you and just add it as an addendum to this video instead of filming a separate one, okay? I mean, I gotta do it, it's tradition, but I'm not gonna make you sit through it. Let's look at my computer and see what I read in June because I have a tiny pea brain. I have a tiny pea brain. I have a tiny pea brain, yes I do. Pulling up me old Goodreads. I know we're supposed to be boycotting, but habitually I still log books there. June. One, two, three, four. I read four books, that's it. And I have a couple on the go. Damn, I only read four books? I don't even know how that's possible or if that's real, but I guess I only read four books. Okay, whatever, get right into it. Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Frazier. The premise of this book is kind of typical DWM, right? We are a depressed recent high school grad working a thankless job at a pizza place and there we become obsessed with a female customer by fulfilling a weird pizza request for her. Uh, I should have liked this book in theory and I didn't. <laughs> I gave it a two out of five star review. Let me jog my memory to remember why I didn't even like it. Uh, the main character is like pregnant has a weird relationship with her live-in boyfriend and her mother and is kind of reflective about the caretaking tendencies she had with her alcoholic father throughout the book. She becomes very attached to this female customer like I said earlier and it almost gets kind of manic and obsessive this relationship to said customer and I think it's kind of just like a, a placeholder for her to project all of the needs that weren't met from her alcohol her alcoholic father right the end of this book definitely has a climax it builds to manic weird circumstances revolving her relationship to said customer who's like a middle-aged mom married you know uh and i just found it a little fantastical a little unbelievable a little weirdly sentimental at the end like it, it had a weird thread of morality about the alcoholic father that i just found a little off-putting and it wasn't great it was readable definitely readable um the writing wasn't very strong i would say but if you're looking for like a romp i would say this is a romp kind of like ya coming of age too much though you know what i mean like not literary enough to ya romp though Next up, I read Nobody, Somebody, Anybody by Kelly McClory. This is an arc that I got on NetGalley. The description of this book on NetGalley dropped a Tessa Moshfeg's name. So I was like, all right, I'm there. It is not as much of a My Year of Rest and Relaxation ripoff as it might seem. Yes, they both have historical oil paintings as the cover. Yes, they are DWM books, but I would say they're very different in tone. And there's obviously like a red through line about them both being about depressed women, but Besides that, it's pretty different. I liked this book. I did like this book. Uh, it's about an anxious young woman who's working at a yacht club as a maid for the summer. And she is kind of leading a lonely insular life. We get flashbacks to something traumatic happening to her in college. And we get this sense that she's isolated herself because of it and is kind of living out alone. She is building her entire life to take an EMT exam because she becomes obsessed with Florence Nightingale, you know, like the iconic nurse. And this idea of like helping people, serving people, being of service. But unfortunately, Amy suffers from really bad test anxiety. So she's she like was at a prestigious college, was a good student, and then this traumatic mystery event happened and she's been completely unable to pass the EMT test because of this. She plans a placebo program to help ease her test anxiety and 
kind of communicates with herself and tricks her mind into thinking that she already was an EMT and already passed the test. Uh, so there's like a, a lie, a crux, a, uh, a delusion throughout the entirety of this book that, that thematically the theme of delusion is is strong throughout here and I thought it was really um, an interesting parallel between Amy's delusion over her EMT test and her landlord and neighbor Gary who has ordered a mail order bride from Ukraine and his delusion around their relationship and the potential he sees with that there. I thought this was interesting. I mean it had a lot of ties of like the lies we sell ourselves, we tell ourselves in in the sake of amb ambition and parental relationships, what it looks like to survive grief. I wouldn't say the writing was particularly strong to me, hence why it only got a three star and a five star, but thematically, if you like a DWM, like a mosh veg, I would say this is a good narrative tie-in to those kind of depressed women moving through the world trying to make something of their life books, right? So give it a try. I think this is Kelly McClory's debut. I know Steffi really liked this book at Perks of Steph. Okay, and then I read Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. Big month of comfort food reading for me, it seems like. It's all about women, you know, in their 20s and 30s trying to trying to move through the world. I don't know why that was such a huge theme of my reading this month, but didn't want to challenge myself, I guess. Uh, Ghost is by Dolly Alderton, who's like a podcaster, celebrity persona in the UK. I wonder what an equivalent would be. I almost feel like she's like Alina Dunham in the UK, but like maybe not as terrible. <laughs> uh, and I think this is her first book of fiction. Yeah, it's a debut novel. I really liked parts of this novel. It's about a character named Dina. No character named Nina who is in her early 30s just got out of a long-term relationship with an ex-boyfriend who she remained really close to and is looking for love again she had built her life and a lot of career progression and really spent her single time after her big breakup working on herself right so she's ready to go back into the world of dating and that means online dating she finds a great suitor there named Max and definitely like bad boy Jess from Gilmore Girls vibes, right? Like masculine, uh, heroic, just like aloof, you know, can't tie him down. But he's also immediately overly emotional and communicative about his adoration of Nina. So. She's into it. She's into it. She's hook, line, and sinkered into this new relationship with the boyfriend. The relationship goes rocky. I did like reading about like the more tender moments. I think Dolly Alderton was really good at writing uh, a realistic sense of romance. I was like, mm, cute. I was like, I like Max. And then like she turns that on her head and kind of destroys him and shows, you know, his downfalls as a character and how that ties into Nina having a more robust, balanced outlook on what she's looking for love. There's also like some tie-ins here about her family and her father struggling with dementia and caretaking for older parents and uh, what that phase of life looks like for her. And just a lot of observational writing about like memory, memories of her childhood, of places in London, of just like the tie of memory and place and how specific and evocative and strong that can be. Uh, I like this book. It was fine, you know? Like, I liked parts of it. It did not wow me. Three stars, a solid three stars. I had fun reading it. I like laughed a few times. I was like, haha, millennial humor. <laughs> uh, if you want any millennial humor, yeah, okay. It's, it's described as Bridget Jones for the millennial generation and like, yes, absolutely. That's a great synopsis of this book, but I thought it was well done. I think this could have been really annoying and like a parody of a millennial love story, but obviously it's like from the perspective of a millennial woman. So it was, it was nice. And then I read Assembly by Natasha Brown. I really, really like this book. It is out in September by Little Brown and Company. Shout out to the publishing twins. They sent me an arc of this and 
what a really interesting tiny little novel probably about like 100 pages so quick little guy narrator of assembly is a black british woman who works in financing and it's all over the course of probably like one day it's very an insular in your head kind of book where you're just nestled in the narrator's every thinking moment and she's preparing to go to her boyfriend's countryside estate where they're having a family party and there's a lot of parallels between her life uh her access to wealth what privilege looks like as a black woman in the uk and her white generational wealth and the generational wealth that her white boyfriend has access to and the career progression path that he's on uh alongside of hers also really good sense of the narrator trying to establish Kiki's home. Hi! I'm filming. You are? Mm hmm. Oh my god. I'm so proud of you. You already saw Kurt. No, I changed my mind. You just came home? Yeah. Yay! Peanut butter cup. Boop, boop, boop. Peanut butter cup. That's my treat for being a human. <laughs> Thanks, Geeks. Also a really great sense of the narrator trying to establish a sense of self and agency in the construct of all of these class hierarchy and structures and race and gender hierarchy and structures that she's found herself within. And there's a specific plot device the book centers around that I don't want to give away because it's central to moving the story along. And I think it was interestingly done. It was a weird way to manage and think through that kind of self-reliance and depiction of self. I really like this book. The writing was really strong and I think it's kind of like um, autofiction because I think the narrator worked in, because the narrator is a black woman living in Britain and also worked in finance. So I think there's some autofiction vibes to that. I think that's all I read. Uh, I also read a couple, I'm also in the progress of reading a couple of nonfiction books. One is Pop Song by Larissa Pham and one was Before I Was a Critic, I Was a Human Being by Amy Fung. Both of those are going okay. I don't think I love Pop Song, kind of a little sentimental for me, but I'm gonna keep trucking because, you know, collection of essays, some might be for me and some others might not be. So that's my June wrap up. Exhilarating, right? Now I'm gonna go find the mid-year freak out mid-year. Okay, I found it. We're gonna do rapid fire. We're gonna try to do this as fast as we can. Best book of 2021 has to be Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler for me. Absolutely a standout. So smart, so cutting. I loved it. Big brain energy all the way. Beautifully done. Best sequel. I don't read series, but I am hoping I am hoping to read The Story of a New Name by Elena Ferrante after I finish my current book. So I'm gonna say that's the best sequel because it's the only sequel I'm gonna read. Releases, I've read an incredible amount of new releases. You know I'm a front list hoe. Let me see if anything catches my eye. New releases, let's say Assembly by Natasha Brown coming out in September. It's gonna be gorgeous, I can't wait. Most anticipated release, sorry to be basic, but I gotta say the Sally Rooney. I gotta say it. I also really wanna read Real Estate by Deborah Levy. Uh, I'm waiting for it to come to my library though. I'm on a self-imposed book buying ban because I got out of hand this year, I really did. Most disappointing, uh, Drifts by Kate Zambreno. In theory, a book I should have loved, DWM, prose. Uh, uh, why can't I think of what it's called? <laughs> I almost said snippets. You know, what does snippets mean? Uh, how does Jenny Awful write? Fragmentary, that's what I meant. Fragmentary prose, photography metaphors, very reflective, sad, and depressing, and I hated it. Completely put me off the DWM genre for a while. Mm. Biggest surprise. Let's see, the surprise of 2021, I don't know. I'm gonna copy Jalen and Simon by saying The Employees, uh, shortlisted for International Booker. I freaking loved that weird little tiny piece of sci-fi. I think it's surprising and delightful and smart and thought provoking in all the right ways. I recommend you check it out. New fave, a new fave, new fave what? 
the the life of the mind by christine smallwood it's a new fave of mine for sure fictional crush i don't think i have any i usually read pretty despicable characters yeah i'm not really attracted to any of these people here maybe both of the people from open water they're like beautiful artists sure the protagonist in open water let's say that new favorite character Ooh, I liked Penfield from Future Feeling by Joss Lake. Very entertaining character to follow. Book that made you cry. I don't think it's happened this year, lads. I do not think it's happened. It hasn't. Kind of hard for a book to make me cry, to be honest. The book that made you happy. What has made me happy? I would say Ghost by Dolly Alderton. I kind of liked reading about that relationship. I was like, oh, maybe I should read a romance book. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to, but I did like reading about that relationship most beautiful book okay let's look at some covers who is the sexiest book here infinite country by patricia engel sure that's it those are the last of the the wrap-up questions that's it that's it for this video i'm gonna end it here thanks for watching that's my mid-year check-in and my june june check-in i also read i also saw at the end of this that i also read home going by ya yasi in june and i really like that i like that book a lot it was good. <laughs> Great. It's gonna be another bad video, I can tell. But you gotta love me anyway. Okay. Do you? Yeah, they do. I know. Bye, tubers. <laughs>